Hey, Ron here. Hey, uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, home labs. I think they're important. Uh, I like emulators. I really do. Uh, however, uh, there's a lot of things you can't do uh, with an emulator, uh, and there's nothing like the experience of you know, getting actual hands-on equipment. You can't really simulate a cable going bad, or uh, if you make a Cat 5 cable and bad pinout or something like that, or uh, cable comes unplugged or you know all these little nuances that go along with physical equipment you can't simulate that in, in uh, a uh, emulator uh, but that's valuable experience that you gain uh, it's a pain in the butt sometimes but again it's experience uh, and it's worth it and you're, you're gonna see it in the real world uh, so whenever I can I get hands-on equipment so the picture I got in front of you is a uh, is my just my small kit that I got at the house so we got three 2600 routers uh, three switches uh, and some other uh, little pieces here and there uh, that basically make up my 12U rack uh, of CCNA level equipment so the the 2600s I like uh, as opposed to the 2500s uh, there to the left you can't really tell but those I have a couple 2500s that are sitting on the floor there that uh, I've, I've bought along the way uh, bought as a part of a package or something along that 2500s are cool you know you can do CCNA level stuff on it but I like the flexibility of the 2600 that you can add modules to it you can uh, you know you just have a little bit more flexibility a little bit more power uh, but you're not stretching the buck so far that it, it just you know makes it not worth purchasing uh, you can still get a, a decent 2600 uh, between 50 and 100 dollars nowadays, and they're all over uh, eBay. So enough about that. The 2600s I do have, uh, I've got them loaded up with different modules that I've acquired along the way. Whether I get them from a buddy, or I borrow them from work, or I find them on eBay, you know, you name it. There's there's WIC 1Ts, there's WIC 2Ts, there's uh, just some 56k serial. Uh, I think I got a T1 card in there. You know, not everything you need, uh, but there's I, I got enough pieces in there that I can simulate most things. Okay, so if you look, these are my 2600s. These are my switches. There's a 1720 right here. Picked this up uh, a while back uh, with a couple of other routers at the time. I didn't think I would use it, but I actually have used it in a couple labs for frame relay. I use it as a frame relay switch. Uh, and I just do uh, some Delsi mapping in there. So when I have this Delsi uh, on this port here that's trying to get to, you know, its distant end, well, this Delsi or this uh, acts as my frame relay switch and maps it over to the next guy so that uh, I can also, you know, terminate it there. And it works pretty good doing that. I haven't done much else with it. A uh, couple of little pieces that, that I've used a USB hub, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, I've got a Cisco firewall that I'm not using right now. Uh, I bought it and the guy sent it with the wrong power supply. Go figure. Uh, trip light, just my power distro. Uh, I've got a computer here. Obviously, you can tell it's pretty old. Uh, it's like a P4 with barely you know any real stats, but it's good enough to run a uh, Linux server. Uh, I'm not a big Linux guy, but I can I can get my way around, uh, and I use this to simulate. Uh, you know, if, if I want to run uh, this as my DHCP server instead of the router, I can do that. If I want to set this up as an FTP server, I can do that. There's a n number of other things that I'm, I'm still playing around with it, but not needed for just general CCNA level stuff. General CCNA, you can you can do everything here. Uh, and then I got extra spare parts of this and that that I've acquired along the way that I'm probably uh, going to get rid of. Uh, the 2600, like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, it's cheap, uh, but also you can upgrade the flash uh, and you can upgrade the RAM, which I've done in, in some of my routers uh, so that I can uh, fit a larger iOS image on it, uh, a more advanced iOS. Uh, when I bought them, they originally came with like an IP base, uh, which doesn't have a whole lot of functionality. It's good enough for most of the CCNA level stuff, but... I like to play around, you know, and, and get into other things. So, being able to to load a heavier iOS uh, was a pretty big deal to me. And so, I had to upgrade the flash and I had to upgrade the RAM. Uh, I know on some of the 2600s, you might have to upgrade. Uh, I can't remember the, the the term for it, whether it's it's the ROM or the uh, the it's basically the BIOS or whatever you want to call it of the router. 
uh, runs the boot images, this and that. Sometimes they don't support you know so much flash or so much RAM, and Cisco recommends that you upgrade them. I didn't have to do that in my case. Uh, I bought uh, 2600 20s uh, XMs, which was <coughs> pretty advanced. Uh, as far as the 2600s go, and it did everything I need. I have two 2610s that were just good enough to be able to upgrade them uh, to the point where I could load a, a better iOS. And again, these these are basically they look like RAM chips that you would see in your computer. So it wasn't that big of a deal. I just had to go on the Cisco website or you know some other third-party website, make sure I was buying the right chip, and found them on eBay, uh, pretty cheap. You know, we're talking like 10, 15 bucks. This is a 2500 that I was talking about before. Uh, reason you know I'm not a big fan of it is because one expandability you, you don't see any uh, any additions any modules that you can put in this what you have is two serial ports in this case and two AUI ports and the AUI ports needed additional uh, connector like an AUI connector uh, and it would come out to to a RJ45 plug uh, which gave you like an Ethernet port uh, pretty lame but at the time I guess that was that was cool in my lab again I run with 2600s I try to avoid the 2500 if I can uh, what else we got here uh, let me go to the next image this is 2600 a little closer up so these are where you can plug your modules in okay so you get a little bit of expandability choice between what ports you want on this thing one of the cards I added was a 16 ESW card, which gave me uh, 16 fast Ethernet ports. In this case, uh, this probably isn't the exact module I used. Uh, mine does not support PoE. Mine does not support uh, uh, layer three uh, switching, which is fine for me. You know, that's that's part of the reason I, I got them is because uh, where I was working at, they were getting rid of the layer two switch port modules and going with layer threes. So I dug them out of the trash. So it didn't cost me anything, but you can still find them pretty cheap uh, online. Uh, it gave me fast Ethernet ports. So the 2610s that I have, uh, they only have an Ethernet port. And what you'll find, and I didn't know it at the time, but an Ethernet port can't do trunking. Go figure. So uh, I went ahead and picked these up uh, out of the trash, and uh, now I can do trunking. Uh, my 2620XM came with a fast Ethernet port, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is one of the WIC 2T uh, serial cards. Uh, so it gives me two uh, ports, uh, two serial ports. Uh, I only use this in one of my routers, and the only reason I'm using it is because it came in a router that I bought. Uh, I've used these at, at work in the past when we were still using serial. Uh, and the only reason we use them is because they support a higher data rate. Here in my home lab, I care less. You know, I'm just looking for functionality. This is a WIC 1T card, so this is primarily what I use at the house. They're real cheap online, uh, and the cables for them are real cheap too. So this will support maybe up to 2 megs, uh, and it's pretty easy, uh, like I said, to find, uh, real cheap to purchase, uh, and it's supported pretty much across the board. So I, so I uh, got a couple of these, you know, with my kits, you know, as, as I bought routers. A lot of them came with these, uh, and I picked up a couple from work as we were getting rid of them. These are the WIC 1T serial cables. The uh, the cool thing about these is you'll notice one's labeled DTE, one's DCE. So in your CCNA level courses, you'll find out that uh, on a serial port, one side needs to provide clocking. Okay, in this case, it's the DCE side. Uh, in a typical scenario, your telco would be the one providing the clocking. However, in our scenario, we have no telco. We are the telco, uh, so you'll have to make sure the the port that that DCEN gets plugged into provides clocking uh, you can also go into the router uh, and look that up you do a uh, show controllers and uh, it'll show you on that port if it's a DTE or DCE port and it does that by sensing uh, what side of the cables plugged into it uh, so you'll know also uh, which sides gonna need uh, to provide the clocking this is a serial cable okay so other cables that you're going to need, we, we discussed the the cables for actual data 
the WIC 1T, the WIC 2T. Uh, this cable is just the console cable. It's just a interface with the router. So the router has a console port, an RJ45 connector. So you use this end on, uh, on the actual router and you use this end on your computer. This is a, uh, a standard 9-pin uh, RS-232 cable. Uh, pretty common. Uh, not so much common anymore. A lot of your newer laptops aren't going to come with the serial port. Uh, a lot of your PCs still come with them, but if they're new, new, they, they might not. In my case, I have one on uh, my desktop, but I do not have one on my laptop. So I cannot go directly to my computer with this. So instead, I use one of these. This is a RS-232 to USB converter. So it allows me to plug uh, that console cable uh, into my laptop's USB port. Okay, and then uh, I'm a Windows guy, so it'll come up as a COM port. And so whenever I bring up my terminal software, whether that be PuTTY or TerraTerm or you know something else, or go old school and we got a little hyper terminal, uh, it enables me just to map it to that COM port and it's just like having it plugged into the back of my computer incidentally if it's plugged into the back of my computer it's COM1 so uh, one thing I also use is a uh, USB hub so what this allows me to do is I plug mo uh, you know the majority of my console uh, connections into that USB hub plug that USB hub into my computer and bam now I've got multiple COM ports mapped and I can choose them on my computer and I'm good to go. I can I could talk to multiple devices uh, without having to ever unplug and, and replug back in. Pretty cool, not that not that uh, big of a deal. Uh, and being that those USB hubs are as cheap as dirt uh, and extra dongles, the USB uh, to 232 cable is pretty cheap itself. Yeah, you know, to me it was worth it. Uh, so I went ahead and did it. That's pretty much my home lab. Uh, like I said, uh, three 2600s, uh, three layer two switches, um, and then some extra parts here and there. Uh, and you can do pretty much the majority of your uh, CCNA labs. All right. Thanks for watching.